mentioning four numbers. The first number is 63. 63 is the power strip I woke up with this morning. And just now as I sat there preparing for this talk, my second number, 84. My password shot up to 84. So I'll be mentioning four numbers. First number, 63. Second number, 84. And if at the end of this talk, you can remember the four numbers, that would mean that I have either managed to get your attention or I am very good at making you remember four numbers. Okay. <coughs> uh, Fitbit was very good to measure my password for me, but if you want to keep time, uh, don't use a Fitbit. Uh, we have a time limit here to give the talk. So if you want to keep time, don't use a Fitbit. Because when you, uh, when you want to engage the audience, you cannot do this. And with the Fitbit, sometimes the time doesn't come up you Oh, and you know that I'm looking at the time already. So to keep time, you have to use your old fashioned watch. Okay. <clears throat> first, an overview of uh, my talk. I will give <coughs> first uh, my credentials for remote working. Why, why I do. Why, how, how I don't know about remote, remote working. Okay. Then I'll talk a bit about the uh, WordPress landscape. After I talk about the WordPress landscape, I'll talk about the support for WordPress. And lastly, I'll talk about happiness engineering and remote working. <coughs> My remote working experience. This photograph, uh, I took it one day when I was uh, working at Burger King. My wife was uh, WhatsApping me. So I sent her this photograph and I said, don't disturb. Uh, this is a photograph of me working remotely. Uh, before Automatic, I was a freelance worker consultant and a SAP consultant. Uh, freelance, <coughs> freelance means, uh, you know, you don't always work at the client space, sometimes you work from home. And for actually two years, I was a worker consultant for a China company, a company in China, a boy company in China, working entirely from Malaysia. So that's my first credential. I was an Oracle consultant working for a China oil company from Malaysia. My second credential, uh, my sister-in-law, she's a chemical engineer working in UK for the UK Health and Safety Lab. She works uh, also from home. She has been working from home since, uh, since she had a baby for eight years. So I know a bit about also remote working from the UK perspective. And my perspective, perspective my, my first third credential, uh, what I learned now today, I'm a happiness engineer at Automatic. Automatic is an amazing and amazing company that is entirely distributed all over the world. Uh, if you have worked in a multinational company in Malaysia, most of your multinationals are either American or from UK. Okay. But in Automatic, I have colleagues from I interact daily with colleagues from all over the world. <coughs> I work with I interact with colleagues from US, Bulgaria. Africa, Russia, Taiwan, New Zealand, Australia, almost every continent of the world. Okay, there is no one office that we go to. All of us work from, uh, we, add up, we can work from co-working spaces, or we can work from home office, or even uh, cafes, anywhere with a good internet connection. So that, is, that was my remote working experience. <coughs> Now a bit about the WordPress landscape. So internally at Automatic, we have these two, uh, main, two big divisions, .org and .com. <coughs> .org is uh, what we call self-hosted. That was actually my uh, earliest experience of using WordPress. In the early, early days, when we, when we have to use WordPress, we have to download the software from WordPress then upload it to a, host, uh, to a hosting company, install it, and then uh, install it on its teams. That was the early, early days. So that is called, that was how it worked, it? self-hosted. You actually had to do everything on your own. And that is very suited for, very suitable for customers who have a good technical team, or you can uh, have access to technical team, or you just have a lot of time for your rich kid. You just have to do everything, you just have to do those were the early days and that was how I started, I was cash strapped and then I wanted to do it. 
So download the software, go to, uh, go to a, I think I said, went to Bluehost. Go to host, upload the software, and then run. Then the other one, dot com. <coughs> dot com is the other one that is run by automatic. In dot com, the software is already done. And we host a site, we let you, uh, we have some built in plugins, and we take care of auto, the software updates and security for you. On the platform, you also have hundreds of teams that are already tested on the WordPress platform that you can choose. And up to uh, 2016, you could not uh, install plugins or install third party teams on automatic. You could not on WordPress.com up to 2016. So at the, up to that time, we were actually not as, uh, not as you don't have actually as, uh, as much power as you on the .op platform. But in 2017, we started a plan called Business, business Plan. And with the business plan, it's as good as the dot .op, or it's as, as much features as the dot .op. You can install plugins, you can install teams, anything on the platform. <coughs> uh, yesterday, I actually had dinner with Adrian, and he said that uh, a major determinant, determinant of the success of open source software, WordPress is open source, is actually having a company full-time behind the software. And automatic is actually the company behind WordPress. What, uh, automatic did not actually take ownership of WordPress, you know. He did not uh, make closed source itself. Okay, from now on, we vote that if anybody wants to use, uh, wants to use WordPress, you have to pay money to, uh, to automatic. Automatic did not do that. And that, in a way, helped contribute to the success of automatic. Imagine, like, uh, let's say today you have the, uh, the recipe for Coca Cola. Coca Cola price is something that the recipe for Coca Cola is kept in a safe somewhere, the recipe that nobody knows. So imagine that the, the recipe for Coca-Cola is exposed. Everybody, this is a recipe for Coca-Cola. You can take it and tweak it and make it and anything, 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 to do anything you like. So that, in a way, is like WordPress. We have a secret formula that we are I think, sharing with everybody. <coughs> so dot .org or dot .com, whichever you are on now, both are very good. We are on WordPress. And now, uh, when I took uh, prepared for the slide, there's actually something Updated on the slide. When I prepared for the slide, <coughs> the information was uh, WordPress powers 31% of the internet. Do you know the latest percentage now? Sorry? Wow, well, okay. You are more today than I. I thought it was 32 as of last night when I was preparing. <coughs> so as of today, it's 33% already. Okay. So with, if you are on WordPress, have it. It's a very good platform. Support for any software, especially for open source, huh? support is very important. Support is very important. <coughs> On the dot .op platform, and the, the, this is amazing thing about the WordPress community, there is a lot of support options available, provided by volunteers. For dot .op, there's a, what, there's a subsite, or oh, most of you already know, there are volunteers of the dot .op support website. They are willing to give you help. You ask the question there, and there are people who tell you the answer. Okay. On .com, there is also a forum that are run by volunteers, or a lot contributed by volunteers. You ask a question there, and volunteers will come and help you. On .com, there is this forum that is uh, contributed mainly by support uh, for, by volunteers. There are also uh, automatic staff who go in there and help out with some questions. Okay. So that is amazing about WordPress. We have a lot of volunteers to help out, and what do they? How what do they get from uh, from helping out? They get a lot of knowledge. You post a problem, they look at the problem, they learn something from it. So we have amazing support committee for WordPress. On WordPress.com, automatic stuff and automation like I want to have. I am a happiness engineer, and what my job is actually to provide email and chat support on WordPress.com. I'm finished talking about the support part already. I'm not going to actually talk about happiness engineering. If any one of you are a WordPress.com customer, you might have met before. This is my opening line. Hi there with a smile. Okay. So you might, you might have met before. 
uh, as a happiness engineer or as work, working remotely, we don't work at the customer's office. We don't work at our office office. Okay, like when I was in Oracle Consultant, uh, as an Oracle finance consultant, most of the time I didn't have to go to the customer's office and be there and do the work. But as a happiness engineer, I don't work at the office office or customer's office. I work from home if I choose to. I can also work from uh, a, a cafe. I can work from a co-working space. I can work anywhere with the uh, internet connection. <coughs> in fact, there's actually no automatic office in Malaysia. Automatic has uh, colleagues, we have colleagues from all over the world, but in all the locations, we actually don't have an office, physical office. <coughs> so, uh, a little bit about working from internet cafe. I once worked from a very popular internet cafe. Uh, I once worked at a very popular internet cafe. I started at 7 o'clock. Then I had a meeting with my with a colleague from US. So it was very good at 7 o'clock. But then as the hours passed, more people came in and then the internet connection started to slow down. And work was difficult because uh, we remember we have to, my job is actually to support uh, by chat or by email. So when I was doing chat with the customers, when the internet slowed down, there's a lot of stress on me because when somebody chats with us, they ask a question, we try to reply as soon as possible. But when they ask a question and I want to investigate, look, 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 you won't know it. So it's very stressful. In the end, uh, I had to actually tether to the phone. I do not use the cafe internet. I had to actually use the phone, open my internet, and then tether to the, the laptop. <coughs> so that is a little bit about if you ever have to work in the internet cafe to consider. Bring your phone along to tether if you have to. <coughs> How is remote working different from working in a traditional office? It is uh, <coughs> very different because uh, when you are working remotely or working from home, you actually cannot just walk into a colleague's office or cubicle and talk and chat. There's no colleague in the house unless you stay with your colleague. So there is no colleague, or there's no office that you can go and knock or cubicle that you can go and knock. And around lunch time, you cannot pick up the phone. Hey, let's go for lunch. There is no, no, usually there's nobody near you. There are now uh, five happiness engineers in Malaysia. Five happiness, and we all work from here. Uh, one is in Penang, one in Guchong. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, one, one is Shalam, okay? So we cannot say, hey, let's go for lunch. Shalam of Penang. Okay, we cannot do that, okay? <coughs> so, in the, that is very different for working remotely. You don't have uh, the office to actually go and talk to somebody or let's have lunch together. So you, it might look very, very, uh, very isolated. You know? you have, you have a lot of isolation. So what? How do we do it in uh, as a definition? How do we overcome this? We have, and this is the third number. We have three tools, three main tools. Number one, Zoom. Uh, anyone know Zoom? Have you Zoom before? Yes. Okay, good. Zoom is what we use for face-to-face -face communication. Uh, but we don't use it so much for actually, uh, not for, for actually, not for getting work done. We use it for actually the facial interaction or bonding or team interaction. And that later I will explain that it's actually very important. We use Zoom to have, uh, we have Zoom once, uh, once in two weeks. And during Zoom, we actually see our colleagues from New Zealand, from, from Australia, from Taiwan, Japan. So we actually see each other's face and then we talk and then we just talk about uh, casual stuff, social stuff. More for us to do social bonding, team bonding. Okay, the first two. Second two, we have something called the internal P2s. A P2 is like a notice spot. So we communicate with each other with uh, or one form of one form of communication with P2. So a P2 is like a notice board and let's say <clears throat> I have an issue. Today I dealt with a difficult customer or I dealt with a difficult issue. The customer is using Gutenberg for the first time and he is complaining that Gutenberg is very difficult to use, it requires too many clicks. I want to know a better way to handle it. So what I can do is I write up the case 
or I encounter this customer who is having a problem with the Gutenberg, <coughs> he doesn't like it that he has so many clicks, I write out the case and I put it on the notice board. Then, my colleagues from all over the world, they can come and say, look at the notice, and then offer their feedback, and they will put a comment at the bottom, hey, I think you should do this. Then another colleague will, will pop up on the reply, oh, this is also another good idea. Or they might say, okay, uh, here's a one typical uh, reply that I give to customers who have trouble with Gutenberg. So all over the world, people who want to uh, reply or help out, they will go to the notice board, look at my notice, and put comments on it. So that is our internal P2. It's like a giant notice board. <coughs> so the very interesting about this notice board is, these notice boards are, are not wall, which means the whole company's notice board, and this notice board is not only just for uh, happiness engineers. Other departments, let's say the coders, or the finance department, uh, the HR department, or the events department, every one of them have notice boards. And we, in automatic, we can actually go to any notice board and read what's interesting in each department. So the notice board in, in, in automatic is very, very transparent. Anybody can go to any notice board, go and read, and put up comments that we like, or that we want to talk about. Because they are, or we want to implement a scheme about on like a happiness engineers must work on weekends. What do you all think? And then we can all go and talk about it. Or, or it's not good for work-life balance. Or we should make it voluntary and not compulsory. So this happens on all the notice boards around the but in automatic. <coughs> So the first two, Zoom, second two, internal P2. The third tool that we use a lot is Slack. In Slack, we do conversations. And we also have channel. Channel is like a room. I think most of you have used Slack before. Have you used Slack? Great. Slack is like a, uh, a channel is like a room. In a room with a lot of conversations going on. And then we also can also do direct messaging. And we can have work or social conversations there. <coughs> Now, you notice that for all these three things, oh wait, before I finish, before I go to Slack, in Slack, one very important thing about Slack is, especially very important in the remote working, uh, remote working scenario is, in Slack, we can put emojis. Emojis are very, very important. Now, imagine, uh, okay, uh, if somebody asks a question and I am angry, I can say, what? You can see the, the, face, the facial emotion, no? what? Okay, but if it's just text, what? You cannot differentiate whether it's a what or what. Okay? So in Slack, we can actually do that. We can put a lot of emojis. And in Slack, you will see, uh, or in Slack, that in, in automatic, we, we use a lot of emojis. With our words we use, we put an emoji at the end. Happy, sad, what are you doing? I'm thinking, wait for a while, I'm busy. So we use a lot of emojis, and that is very important in Slack, uh, in, in automatic, because <coughs> A lot of our communication in automatic is through text. Text doesn't convey the tone very well. The same word can mean you're angry or you're happy or you're bored. But we uh, <coughs> supplement the text with emojis. There are plenty of emojis that we use in automatic. <coughs> our Slack communication is also asynchronous. Asynchronous is because uh, in automatic, the, we have colleagues from all over the world, which means we have colleagues from across many, many, many time zones. So we don't expect the communication to, to be synchronous. I, I ask you a question, you answer immediately. We understand that if I ask a question, the answer might come back several hours later. Another important thing about the information being text, huh? Like, uh, let's say the notice board P2, and then the Slack conversation also in, in text, is that you have <coughs> all these text conversations which are, it's almost like you have all these notice board and conversations which are text floating around all over the company. And these conversations, the notices and the conversations, they are searchable, they are referenceable, and you can, they are recorded. So you can actually, at any point in time, I did it. Oh, I remember we had a discussion about uh, Gutenberg with the, the, the Gutenberg and something else. We can actually go and search in, in automatic. What was the discussion we had about Gutenberg? We can search all these notice boards, all these conversations in Slack. So that is actually very amazing. 
any knowledge or any conclusion, any ideas that we have from uh, Slack conversation or in the, uh, in the P2 discussion, all this is recorded and at any point in time later, anybody can say, let's go and look for this again. So it is useful for somebody who was in the conversation, it is useful for somebody who just joined the company and who doesn't have the context, he can say, I'm sure this has been discussed before. So let's go and search and they can find all these relevance. If you, you know you must use a tool and go and search, search in P2 or search in the Slack, what has been discussed about this issue before. So that is the amazing thing about text communication inside automatic. We do we have all this information all permanently stored archive that we can go and search and find out about things and learn about things. What remote working is not. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes when you drive around in KL, you see uh, um, a six, four figure income, work from home only. So it looks like working from home is a good thing. Uh, it's a very easy thing to do. Okay? Working, remote working is not uh, easy money. It is not passive income. Okay? I hope from what I've told you so far, you will, know, you will agree that uh, remote working as a happiness engineer is a uh, very intense work. It is not passive income. It is not just me switching from home. I just let it run and uh, just sit back and at the end of the month I get money. It is not that at all. On the contrary, remote working, <coughs> so there are some very important things to have in for remote working to be successful for both parties, for the employee and for, for the employee. Number one is trust. It is very important to establish a trust. <coughs> for my uh, remote working engagement with China, China pays me a certain amount of money for every hour that I work. It is very important that they trust or it's very important that they are able to trust that me, that I am doing work during the hour because they cannot see me. Okay? So they must be, we must establish a trust that okay, I, am, I will do my work diligently, I will be responsible with the company resources and with their resources. It is very important to establish the trust. And if you start a remote working uh, arrangement, that trust that you earn, you must keep it and don't ever betray it. Okay. You must have the trust because as much as they trust, the moment the trust is betrayed, uh, then they say, how can I trust? When they first, when they even ask, how do they trust you? Uh, how can I trust you? Uh, the whole arrangement will probably be cancelled. If I cannot trust you, I will just stop it already. Okay? So trust is very important. <clears throat> Number two, accountability. Each of us belong to a team. We are accountable to ensure that our activities our activities contribute to the team goals. And each of the team activities contribute to the organizational goal. So we make sure that we are accountable. We have to make sure that, that what I'm doing is going to contribute to the team goal. And then the team leader as a whole is our activities as a team contributing to the organizational goal. The third thing we have to do, we have very, very clearly articulated purposes and goals. They are clearly specified. Uh, <coughs> when I was uh, working in a traditional office, sometimes we actually, the goals and our purpose are not really clearly stated. But here, uh, in the remote working, in the remote working, the goals are clearly stated. You must interact with customer up to a certain number per day, or up to a certain number per month. That is your goal. So that is clearly spelled out. The goals are clearly spelled out, and the goals have to help contribute to the team's goals. So all of us, working remotely, we have a clear goal in mind, common goal that we agree on, and we hope our activities are coordinated to move towards the goal. So the trust, the accountability, and the goal. <coughs> Number four, there is a lot of measurement. Uh, the work, the output that we produce are measured. Like, uh, like in the happiness engineer's case, how many tickets I uh, reply to is measured. How many chats that I uh, attend to is measured by day. Okay. So all these are measured. So it's not a, a, I trust you to do it. No. 
it's not like this. Measure. And this measurement is public. Everybody in the organization can see how many checks did he do, how many updates he did, or how many he didn't do. This measurement is publicly available to the company. And another thing that's very important also, remotely working, we must regularly send out house. House means that I'm still around. <laughs> you know? Because if you don't, you can very easily be speaking this. So from time to time, it's all attack. Hey, just checking in. I'm here. Okay. So we set up pass from time to time that, hey, I'm still around. <coughs> Remote working, you might not like it. Not everybody might like it. <coughs> Number one is the, what is the problem? What, what is difficult about remote working? Isolation. When you are working for a long time only from the home or from the room, same room, same four walls, you can feel very isolated. Like you wake up and then you go to the your place. You are in your home all the time. I felt a bit like that when I was working in China when our communication with China was only through email. So email no emoji. It's very bad to put emoji in the email. Okay. So email no emoji, so you they send you a, they send me an issue, I resolve, I reply. <coughs> There's no conversation about, okay, good job, thanks for helping us out. It's just, okay, done, here's the next issue, we load it, okay, done. So I felt isolated when I was working for China at home. <coughs> and <coughs> in automatic, we try to uh, over, we try to prevent this isolation, we have to zoom, so that at least once in a while, we have to see each other, see each other face to face, we see each other. <coughs> and in automatic also, uh, every new, a uh, newcomer is assigned a mentor and a buddy. The mentor will try to, uh, the mentor is usually from somebody outside the department. The buddy is somebody from the same department. So the buddy will try to guide you on how to do your job well within your department. The mentor will give you a bigger picture of the organization so that you know there's more to, so there's more to your work than just okay, chat for tickets. My mentor is a JavaScript coder. So I know about the coding side of the, 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 of the company. I know his uh, challenges working with the coding. I know his uh, stresses working with coding. Okay. He's also from Bulgaria. So I also know that uh, know about the education system in Bulgaria. So we had a, a chat the other day. So this mentor and buddy interactions, they <coughs> help to reduce the isolation. So it's not just you come in, you start at 8 o'clock, you finish at 5 o'clock, you just work, 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 work. It's not like that. So in automatic, they give you certain days of the time when you go and talk to somebody, talk to your mentor. You can talk about anything. So my mentor, the other day, we talked about the education system. Because SPM system now. So I talked about the education system. Then I talked to my buddy. My buddy talked about uh, how to use certain tools to be more productive on doing my work. So the first thing that, is, that might be a hazard when you work from home is uh, isolation. Number two, the second hazard is uh, overworking. Because you work from home, it's, it's very easy to overwork. When you are working in office, you uh, clock in at 8 o'clock, then clock by 5 o'clock and say, okay, I'm off work now. So when you don't have you can you feel a, a, a physical thing that I'm off work now, I'm going to the LRT or I'm going to my car and driving home. I watch, I put on my leg and watch TV. So you have a, a ritual way of saying, I am off work now. But when you're at home, <coughs> you cannot go out of the house and I'm off work now. Because then you go back to the house. Okay? So in when you're remote working from home, you're always in your workplace. That is the danger that you might feel that it's so easy to overwork. Because and you are, as I said, you, you stay. At 5 o'clock, I will finish work. So 5 o'clock, you finish work, you stop. But then, as you go down, walk away from the office, and say, I have no problem with you. It's so easy to just watch the computer and do it again. And then you will do. You might walk away again, and oh, this is another event. I must do it before tomorrow morning. Or again, you put it back. So it's very easy overwork. And the danger of this is as you. <coughs> 
when you overload for a long time, you burn yourself up. Okay. In automatic, what we uh, in as a happy here, one of the things that my buddy tell me is that we have to establish boundaries. You know the ritual that said, off work now, we have to establish boundaries for ourselves in uh, as a happiness engineer. So <clears throat> my buddy's way of establishing the boundary is uh, she has a work computer and a home computer. On the home computer, she will not install any of the work stuff. And whenever she wants to do work, she will not use the home computer. On the work computer, she will not <coughs> do any of the personal stuff. So she will work. When she finishes, she will close this computer, go to the home computer. And she also has a, a, a room that where she does work. She will go out the room if she wants, she wants to not stop work. She will go out the room. That's her boundary. And then uh, I have another colleague whose boundary is uh, a to-do list. Okay. So after he finishes his uh, core work, he will look at his to-do list and say, okay, I'll do item number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. After I finish this number five, I am done for the day. Okay. So he said his boundary is the checklist. When he finishes the checklist, this is off work now. Okay. So it is important to establish boundaries of work. Otherwise, it's very easy to overwork yourself because it's so easy to get work at home. Conversely, the other danger is underworking. Sometimes you might <coughs> we have problems in life. So you might hit the problem and then you, uh, you are not productive. So you might underwork. <coughs> so that usually does not last very long. And when you underwork, <coughs> when you are hit with a problem in life and because there's no interaction, it's very difficult to tell. I go through a hard time now, so be understanding that I will not be productive in the next few weeks. This, that kind of conversation is nicer when you talk. Nicer talk. But when, when you put it in your email, please understand that I will not be productive for the next few weeks because I go through a horrible time. It's not very nice to put it in your message. <coughs> so that is underworking. And the fourth thing, <coughs> why you might not like is there's a lot of, uh, I said there's not measurement, there is a lot of stats recorded. How many tickets you do on Monday? How many tickets? How many tickets you do on Tuesday? Everything is recorded. So on one particular day, when you are not productive, it will be there, like your red mark and your report card. On Wednesday, he was not productive. On Thursday, he was very productive. So there's a lot of stats recorded on you. On the other hand, you might also like to move to move again. <coughs> Number one, the advantage, you can work from anywhere. You can work from home, you can work from hometown, you can also work from a small town. So care houses are very expensive now. So if you get a remote working okay, like arrangement, you can move to a small town, buy a house there, and work profitably. Okay? You can work from anywhere. I have a colleague who's on vocation, goes back to Tanjung Rok. Yeah, Tanjung Rok Bhutan. He's a care staff, he said, I can go and work in Tanjung Rok Bhutan also. Number two, flexibility. In automated, we have a lot of flexibility. I can say that on Monday, I want to start at 8 o'clock, but Tuesday, I want to start at 8 o'clock. And then on uh, Thursday, I want to work on half day. But then, in general, I must commit to working uh, 40 hours per week. Okay? So the flexibility that I have in automated is every day's schedule can be different by the day, by the month, so I can say that oh, in, uh, in November, I want to work, but this diff difference in hours, they allow it. <coughs> in fact, uh, uh, in December, I'm making an overseas trip. I will even be working in a different time zone. And I say, okay. okay. So very quickly, the third reason why you might like it is, if you have good work ethic, so you want, you are, you are conscientious and you are a nurse worker, you will like working for uh, in, uh, remote working uh, engagement like automatic. I once worked for a boss who came to work at 11 a.m. every morning during the World Cup season. Very demotivating. I come as honest worker, I come to the office at one time. The boss drove it at 11 o'clock. Very hard work. Very demotivating. But that doesn't happen to automatic. We all are driven by the goals. If you don't do your part, your goals show up, your numbers drop, you will see even. But, <coughs> uh, zero commute. Okay, yesterday somebody told me, uh, uh, 
she's a remote worker. She said, when she sometimes has to drive, uh, drive around, and she's here, she was calling. She said, I let you fly, you have to go to office every day. I know you are very stressed. I have no stress. I have no stress, okay? No, zero comment when you work from home. And the last number, 40. I have to finish by 10, 40. Okay? So that's the last number. Now we come to QA, right? Where do I become? All right, that's a great presentation. Some insights from automated guide. So just before we finish the session, if you have any Q&A, go ahead. We still have some swag from WooCommerce and automatic. Questions? Yes. Yeah, just out of curiosity, how do you get your paycheck? Oh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, they ask for a bank account, and at the end of the month, magically, it appears in my bank. <laughs> they, ask, they, 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 they say, give us a bank account. We agree on the, we actually, when we join, we actually agree on a contract. What is the amount they agree to, uh, they agree to pay me? Then they ask for a bank account. Yeah. End of the month. So, okay. no EDM, no software, you're on your own. Correct. <laughs> so, one of the things that I actually told my colleagues is uh, establish a company. So, let them pay to the company and then ask the company, the company pay yourself EDM. Okay, one more question. Yeah. Where do I apply? Sorry? Where do I apply? Oh, you can apply now. In fact, Automatic is a, uh, they are advertising in Job Street. Or you can just go to the Automatic website and look for, look for the, they don't tell you, here's how you apply, you have to do some uh, investigation on how to apply to the Automatic. All right, uh, thank you very much. Okay, I have four questions. First number? 63. Second number? 